اهلا وسهلا اهلا وسهلا right now i want to talk a little bit more about the masdar in arabic what we sometimes call in english the ing form the verbal noun uh, gerund really the best way to think about it is just that a masdar is a masdar and i'd like to talk about one of the specific aspects of using masadir in Arabic. If you've studied masadir before, and if you need a refresher, you can go back and look at the videos we prepared about masadir and how they work. You probably remember that one of the ways of thinking about them is that they are the ing form, the verbal noun, the idea of writing or eating or talking or whatever the case may be. But as a slightly more advanced user of Arabic, it's also very important to recognize that a lot of masadir are not just verbal nouns. They have much more noun-like meanings, much more conventional noun-like meanings. And we don't need to fall into the trap of only considering them as sort of dormant verbs. I just wanted to share a couple of examples with you. For example, the verb qabala form 3 in Arabic means to meet up with or interview a person. So if we wanted to, it could be tempting to think of al-muqabala the masdar form as interviewing. And we could do that and it might be useful for us, but it's also important to remember that muqabala is also a very, very normal word just for interview, the thing that is an interview. So if I wanted to talk about a job interview, a very normal way to do that would be to say مقابلة عمل That's an indefinite idafa, right? A job interview. So not just interviewing, not just the verbal idea, but a noun, this thing that is an interview, a sit down with a person. A couple of other examples. We have a verb احتفل in Arabic, that kind of means to celebrate or to have a party. If we're celebrating something in particular, we would have a bi at the end. So the mustard is al-ihtifal, which we could render as celebrating. Or maybe partying, but it also means celebration. So if we wanted to talk about Ramadan celebrations, we could say Al-Ihtifalat Ramadaniya. One really handy thing when we're trying to convert this idea in our minds from the ing form to an actual noun, celebrating, celebrations. If we ever need to make a mustar plural, especially in derived forms from 2 through 10, there is a very good chance that it's a regular feminine plural. Even though ihtifal in the singular, doesn't have a tamar buta, we can make it plural with alif ta. Another example of that would be if we were talking about uh, needing something. The verb form, ihtaja, form eight, and then we get the mustar. Al-ihtiyaj. 
So we could refer to that as needing, I-N-G, but we could also just call it a need. Ihtiyaj, <coughs> or al-ihtiyaj, would be a very normal way to talk about a need as a noun. So if we were talking about basic human needs, we could say in Arabic, al-ihtiyajat. Or excuse me, probably we would use an idafa. Ihtiyajat al-insan al asasiya What is it we say? What's the term of art in economics or psychology? Fundamental human needs? That's how we would say it in Arabic. Asasiya, feminine, because we're referring to this non-human plural here, al-ihtiyajat. So the adjective that describes it is feminine singular. And once again, even though al-ihtiyaj, the verbal noun, the masdar in the singular, doesn't have a tamarbuta, I can pretty much count on pluralizing it with an alifta. There are lots and lots of useful nouns that we get from masadir. We don't even need to change them. We can just employ them. It's not 100% sure. It's not always a completely safe bet, but if you are trying to express an idea as a noun and you know a verb that you can turn into a noun-like idea, often you will wind up with the correct term if you can pull off this little change. <laughs>